Back in the 1990s, I was a speaker at a multicultural conference where we had a panel discussion about our different spiritual paths, and I was sharing stories from Midrash and Hasidic stories, stories from Talmud, etc., and there was this Christian guy who turned to me and said, that's not scripture, you might as well be talking about the Wizard of Oz. Well, little did he know that I already had a Kabbalistic mystical interpretation of the Wizard of Oz, which I proceeded to tell at the conference. Now, it's not scripture, that's true. But Rebbe Nachman of Breslov used fairy tales to get his teachings across. And in that spirit, I am going to share with you my interpretation of the Wizard of Oz. The movie opens in black and white, which is what people expected of movies back then, because that's how movies were. On an ordinary farm in Kansas, there we meet Auntie M and Dorothy and, and the farm hands, and everybody's doing ordinary farm things. And then comes Mrs. Gulch, who's going to take away Dorothy's little dog, Toto. The dog perhaps represents her peace of mind, her happiness, her contentment. And here comes Miss Gulch is going to take that away. And so Dorothy decides to run away from home. We've got to get away. We've got to run away. She doesn't get very far before she meets a fortune teller who, pretending to tell her fortune, realizing this is a little girl running away from home, he convinces her she needs to go back. And she starts to go back, but when she gets there, there's a tornado, a cyclone, and her whole world is turned upside down. She can't go back to the way it was before. The house is sucked up into the tornado, and everything is going to change. Now, this is the way it is in real life. When a crisis comes along, we try to run away from it. That doesn't work. We try to go back to the way it was before. That's not going to work either. And so we really have no choice but to, as the story says, follow the yellow brick road and find out where it is that we are supposed to go next. When Dorothy opens the door of the house, she looks out into this magnificent fairyland and she says to her dog, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. And she's not. She's in the land of Oz. Now, L. Frank Baum, who wrote this story, was asked, how did he come up with the name of Oz for the magic land? And he said, well, he was telling the story to his children and they asked the name of the land. And he kind of looked at his file cabinet in the O to Z drawer. It says O to Z. So he said Oz. Well, maybe. On the other hand, in Hebrew, Oz, Oz, means power, strength. And this is a story of empowerment and finding one's own inner strength. So whether or not Baum intended it to be that or not, I'll never know. But it certainly is true that he named the land exactly what it should be called. The land of strength, the land of personal empowerment. Now, along this yellow brick road, this path of enlightenment that Dorothy is going to follow, you'll, she'll meet various different characters, which I'll talk about in a minute. But think about this. In the movie version, the yellow brick road begins exactly where she's standing. They begin to sing, follow the yellow brick road. She looks down and she's standing at the point of a spin in the middle of a spiral. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. And it spirals out from there. And this is exactly how it is with any spiritual path, with any quest in life. We start where we are. Where we are standing right now is the beginning of the path. So anyway, Dorothy was going to meet a number of different characters. First, she meets Glinda the Good Witch. And that's the Yetzer Tov, the inclination to do good. And then she meets the Wicked Witch of the West. And that's the Yetzer Hara, 
the inclination to do evil. And these two characters are going to follow her throughout the entire story. Glinda the Good Witch, the Yetzer Tov, the Wicked Witch of the West, the Yetzer Hara. She also meets three traveling companions. First, she meets the Scarecrow, who is looking for a brain. He represents the intellectual, the thinking part of the path. Then she meets the Tin Man, who's looking for a heart. And he represents the emotional, the feeling part of the path. And then they meet the lion, the cowardly lion who's searching for courage. And he represents action, the active part of the path, the doing. And so what you really have is you have thinking, the scarecrow, feeling, the tin man, and you've got action, the lion. Thinking, feeling, and doing are the three aspects of our personalities that we take with us on any quest. Now, Toto, the little dog, represents grounding. He's the physical body. Because you can't spend your entire life up in the spiritual ozone layer. You have to come down to Earth now and then. And if you notice throughout the movie, Toto is the one always barking and alerting them to various different things that they have to deal with on the physical level. So you have thinking, feeling, doing, and the body which carries you forward along the yellow brick road. Now, the companions on this quest have been told to go to the Emerald City and find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, who is going to be able to solve all their problems. By the way, those roosters in the background are real. This is not a green screen behind me. I am filming this out in my own yard. <laughs> so they're giving me sound effects, and that's good. Anyway, they are told to travel to the Wizard of Oz. Now, there are people who interpret the wizard as being God, kind of skeptically saying, well, you know, they think it's God, and then they get there, and they discover there's no real wizard, it's all a fake. No, that's not the way I go with it. The wizard is not God. The wizard is the teacher, the guide that you're relying upon for expertise, the Rebbe, the guru. You have to trust that this person is going to lead you in the right way and knows what to do. And so they go there, and when they get to the Emerald City, they have to cl get cleaned up, wash away the dust and grime from the trip, and then they're ready to go and meet the wizard. And the lion indulges in all kinds of grandiose, if I were king, I would do this and I would do that. But when it turns out, the guard won't let them in the castle. No one's met the wizard, no way, no how. And he goes stomping back in and slams the door. And the companions of the quest all sit down and they cry. What are they going to do? Poor Dorothy's never going to get home. Now, these are tears of repentance. These are tears of humility. They're no longer indulging in wild fantasies of how much power they're going to have. They are humbling themselves. And these tears move the heart of the guard who says, yes, I will get you in to see the wizard. And so they're ushered into this big, grandiose hall with all kinds of pyrotechnics and special effects, and the wizard's voice booms out and says, I am Oz, the great and powerful. Who are you? Who are you? And he doesn't give them what they wanted. He gives them another quest. He says, bring me the broom of the Wicked Witch of the West, and when you bring the broom back, then I will give what you want. Now, this is actually what often happens in Casidic stories. People will go to a Casidic Rebbe, and they expect the Rebbe's going to just hand it to him on a silver platter. The Rebbe says, no, I want you to go to this place or go talk to this person. I want you to go do this or go do that, and when you come back, tell me what happened, and then we'll talk about it. And so that's what the wizard does. He sends them off on another quest to find the broom of the Wicked Witch of the West, which you know by now is the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination within ourselves to get the staff of power, 
to take power away from the Yetzir Hara. That is the quest they have to do now. And now the Yetzir Hara is going to fight back a whole lot harder because it's axiomatic that when you start out to do something good, the evil inclination is going to try and pull you back to not doing it. And so now the witch sends flying monkeys and she sends curses and she locks Dorothy in the castle and tells her that she only has a certain amount of time and turns over this hourglass. But in the end, they win out. When, they, when the companions of the quest, the, the thinking, feeling, doing, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion come in, and again, it's Toto that shows them the way in. He's the physical body who grounds them. They come in, they confront the witch, and they splash water on her, and she melts away. Now, we could call that the mikvah. That's purification. Water has always symbolized purification in these stories. And once she's done that, all the guards, all the minions of the Yetzir Hara bow to her and say, Hail Dorothy, you know, who killed the wicked witch of the West. She asks for the broom. She takes it back to the wizard. And now we find out that the wizard is just a little man behind the curtain. This is the part that the skeptics will say tells us there is no God. But no, I would say this tells us that the teacher is human. Who are you? Oh, I, I, I am the great and powerful wizard of Oz. You are? Uh, I don't believe you. No, I'm afraid it's true. There's no other wizard except me. They needed to believe that he was a powerful wizard in order to go on the quest. If they had just known he was this little guy operating the controls of a bunch of special effects, they would have never risked it. But he gave them the model to do it, the courage to do it. But now he reveals to them, I'm just an ordinary person just like you. And those things that you wanted, you've already got them. And he gives them symbols to represent those things. So the lion gets a medal and the tin man gets a ticking clock, a ticking watch, testimonial watch, because the testimonial is what they give philanthropists who did good deeds, good deed doers, you know, and he gets that. And the scarecrow gets, and this is the, <laughs> the line I love in this story. The wizard says, lots of people in the world have no more brains than you do, but they have something you don't have. They have a diploma. And he gives him a diploma. And Dorothy says, these are all wonderful gifts, but I know there's nothing in that bag for me. And the wizard says he will personally take her back to Kansas. So then there's a great big fanfare, you know, and he's going to take off in his balloon. And Toto, once again, the one who grounds us in this world, sees a cat, chases the cat. She goes after the dog and he, the wizard takes off without her. Well, you can't ride to heaven on the coattails of your teacher. You have to do the work yourself. And so that's what this represents. And now she says she's never going to get back. And here comes Glinda the Good Witch. And Glinda, the Yetzer Tov, comes and says, you've had the shoes from the path all along. You've had the ruby slippers. They represent the shoes you walk the path with. You've been walking the path in these shoes. All you got to do is click your heels together three times. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Call God, praise God, holy, 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 and you go back. You could have done this all along. I could have told you this in the beginning, she says, but you would not have believed me. And indeed, this is true of any self-transforming path or treatment or, or anything you're going to try and do. The, people can tell you what to do. They can say, do this, 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 and this, but you're not going to believe them. You have to go through. You have to go through the process yourself. And as you go through the process, you gain the insights, you gain the strength, and then you realize that all you have to do is symbolically click your heels three times, and you can do it yourself when you can go back. Now, Dorothy returns. She wakes up in bed, so we know now this, maybe this was a dream, um, and she's, and they tell her, yes, yes, you, you were knocked out. We, we thought we lost you, but now you're back with us. And she says, no, no, it was a wonderful place. And, and you were there and you and you and you. And because now the world she lives in everyday reality, Kansas, so to speak, is no longer dull and boring. It's magical. It's God's creation behind all the ordinary objects around you. You see the wonder and the beauty of creation. 
you see the wonder and the spirit of the trees and the flowers and, 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 and the people around you. And so every day becomes a magical quest. And with that, I'm going to leave you with a blessing I've used for many, many years. No matter what your spiritual path may be, may you continue to walk that path in beauty, joy, and peace. Music